Welcome back. I've definitely put this off long enough. Today on LaserNug. Several of you good folks have asked me if I would please do this video, most likely because I'm using a Macintosh and most tutorials are done with a PC or a Windows-based computer. Today we're setting up the camera. I haven't needed it to date, but now I've got some material which would be really helpful to use. So before we open the computer up, here's what you need. You're going to need a flat piece of board that's at least close to the same size as your honeycomb, which is 20 by 12. In this case, I'm going to use actually the back side of my template for my business cards, and it's MDF, 1 8 inch. The reason I'm using this is because we're going to be calibrating that camera, and I want to make sure I have a nice flat surface. I know a lot of folks are using cardboard. I'm not a big fan, but by all means, if you don't have a piece that you're willing to do a light engrave on, then cardboard might do the trick. You're also going to need something that's printed. Preferably anything you have around the house that's a piece of paper that's got some kind of print on it, different sizes if possible. And remember, it doesn't matter at this point whether it's flat or not because we'll use magnets or some kind of weight to hold it down. It's important to have something that you can see through the camera so you can make sure that the camera is focused accurately and your picture is clear. You would have received this bag with the bolt. Inside this bag, you will find a thumb drive, a USB thumb drive. You're going to need that. There's a file on there we have to import. If your Mac is, you know, within the last four or five years, you most likely do not have a USB drive to plug in. You probably only have USB-C ports. So you're going to need an adapter to allow yourself to plug in that thumb drive. This bag also contains a printer cable. You'll notice the printer cable because it has an end that looks like that. Sorry, I don't know the technical name. And it also has a USB end. If you're going to be using your Mac with the bolt and with light burn, I'd highly recommend that you just pick up the same type of cable with a printer cable end, but with a USB-C end on the other side. That way you're not constantly having to use an adapter. But either way, no matter how you've hooked up your bolt, if you're using a Mac, you would have hopefully done the direct ad hoc method using the Ethernet cable. You're always going to now need two cables running from the bolt to your Macintosh. And this is going to plug in to the slot right above the Ethernet called PC. You might have noticed that Chris from Thunder Laser USA is on the other screen behind me. He's done a very good video on how to set up your camera. It's just there's a few parts relative to Macintosh that are not included. And there's a couple of changes to the bolt which is not included in his video because he's done it a while back. But it is an excellent video overall, so I'm going to be following that in the background. So hey, grab a cup of your favorite Java, get your stuff ready, and let's get at it. The camera on the bolt came with a cover, so you're going to need to take that off. One big change between other videos you may have seen, and I'll try to zoom in for you, according to Chris, the lens on this camera, you can adjust left and right to focus it. However, when it came from the factory, you'll notice there's going to be some blue, what I might call silicone in there. And you'll notice that you can't turn this. The reason you can't spin the lens is because this is a blue, it's, type, it's like a type of silicone, it dries quickly, but it's put in there to make sure that however it was calibrated from the factory, it doesn't move during transport. So once they've done their calibrations, they'll apply this blue silicon. It dries quickly and it stops the camera from being moved or bumping out of position. You'll notice it's the exact same stuff you're going to find on the screws on your mirrors. And it's okay to undo them. It's just done there to make sure that during transport or getting bumped around, your mirror alignments that they calibrate from the factory don't get knocked out of alignment. So I have my power plugged in. My Ethernet cable is plugged in as always. And I'm going to take my printer cable and I'm going to plug it into the port above called PC. It's only going to fit in one way. Let's plug in our Ethernet connection. Let's plug in our new printer cable. And we'll get our adapter ready on the far side. We'll turn on our bolt and now we'll open up Lightburn. Just for reference, it's March 2024. I'm currently running Sonoma 14.4 on my Mac and I'm running Lightburn version 1.5.04. The first thing we need to do, I understand, is we need to get the camera settings into our 
our desktop. So I believe if we go up to the window command here at the top in Lightburn, and we come down, there it is, camera control. When I click this, I believe it's going to show up on the right-hand side for me. And it did. Okay, and if I come back over here to the middle right along my tabs, now I have a new one called camera control. I got to click that. And this is what my window looks like. I'm going to grab my thumb drive that says Thunder Laser on it, and I'm going to plug it into my adapter. And now I'm going to right-click this window, anywhere in the window. And I'm going to ask it to import camera settings. I'm going to click that. I'm going to come down the left. There's my Thunder Drive, my thumb drive. Underneath Thunderbolt, I'm looking for the calibration file for camera. There it is. I'm going to open that. And here is the file I want. I'm going to highlight that. And I'm going to click Open. With that file imported, I'm going to come up here beside camera. I'm going to open this. And there it is. Great. There's my FaceTime camera. But you want this one called KS5A2361. Click on that. Lightburn would like to access the camera. I will allow it. And there's a view. Jeez, that's quick. But we're not done yet. What I'd like to do before we go too much further is I want to make sure that that camera is in focus. So now that we've got the camera on, you can probably see how messy my workshop is. I want to put my MDF in there and get it centered. And I also want to grab that piece of paper with the writing on it. And I want to set that down somewhere around the middle. And then I want to close the lid. And I just want to see if the camera is in focus and I can clearly see those letters. I just want to take a look and make sure that it's nice and focused. And with my eyes, I need to get this much bigger. And that looks nice and clean. I can read it very clearly. So I think the calibration on the camera from the factory will do the trick. So I could put this back into my side window. There we go. And before I go any further, I no longer need this USB stick. So I'm just going to eject it. And then I'm just going to remove that piece of paper out of the bolt. And I'm going to autofocus on top of my MDF. Let's do that. Before we get to calibration, there's an important point here, especially as a Macintosh user. When you put that piece of paper in there to check to make sure that you could see it clearly and that the camera was focused, if the writing or the words on that piece of paper were flipped upside down, in other words, the writing or the piece of paper looked like it was 180 degrees and it wasn't actually facing you in light burn like mine was, I'm going to put a link in the description of the video to a Thunder USA knowledge base file that will explain to you the three options that you have in front of you for how you fix or revise that camera to allow it to reflect or to take pictures in the right orientation. Mine did, so I'm pretty happy about that. So let's get to calibration. So a quick check-in before we calibrate. We've got our MDF or our cardboard in there. We have it centered and it's flat. We also have checked the camera to make sure that the picture is not inverted. So we know our camera's good. We also know that we're in focus. So in my case, the calibration from the factory is perfect. I can see the words on my piece of paper nice and clear. We've auto-focused using our regular auto-focus procedure on that MDF or the material that we're going to calibrate on. Door is closed. And now we're going to head back into Lightburn. So from here, let's go up to Laser Tools and come down and you'll see Calibrate Camera Alignment, not Calibrate Camera Lens. You want to click on the alignment. We have a camera that's over the work position, so we're going to highlight that and click it. Now we need to select our camera. That's our KS5A model. We're going to click Next. And I don't know why some of these settings are chosen, specifically the one called scale. 
but I'm just going to follow Chris's lead and what numbers or values he's chosen for the engrave as well as for the scaling of this whatever this calibration test is. So first material thickness doesn't matter all we're trying to do is score this a bit. He's chosen 400 millimeters and he's chosen 30 percent power. For his line speed he's chosen 80 and for the line power he's chosen 20 and for scale he chose 140. I'm just going to move this over so you can see what happens. We're not going to choose air assist but we are going to click this button called frame and watch what happens on the desktop. There we go. So you'll see it has imposed four different checkpoints and a center target. Now with our settings in place, our MDF is in place, we're auto-focused, we're going to click start and I believe when we do the laser will engrave those five different points on top of the MDF. Let's take a look. Nice. So far so good. Let's head back into Lightburn and finish this calibration. Okay, we're back on our camera alignment wizard. We are going to click next. And on this screen, you want your gantry and your laser head out of the way. Mine is already here because it automatically went there when it was done. But you can click that, make sure it is. Now we want to capture the image that's in the bolt. We're going to click capture image and I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it. I'll zoom it in for you, but it shows it really clearly, which is nice. We're gonna click Next, and here we're gonna zoom in. Oh, there we go. I can move it around. And now what we're going to do is we're gonna go one through four, and we're gonna double click the exact center of each of these targets. I'm gonna do number two now, so I need to move over. Good. Actually undo a little bit right on that one. That's better. And four. Not bad. Once they're all done, we can click next. We're done press the finish button to exit. Great. So our camera is now calibrated, but I'm just going to follow his lead and I just want to do a test on the center just to make sure it's working properly. I'm going to come up to this camera control and I'm going to click update overlay. And now you can see that's what the camera sees on my workspace. But I'm going to run his test here just to make sure we're nice and clean. First of all, let me make this bigger so we can all see it. And I'm going to grab this and move it over. And I think he's mentioned in his video that you're going to lose some uh, accuracy the further out from the center you get using a camera. So we're going to use the center dot as he said. I'm going to come over here to the left. I'm going to grab my square shape. And let's just put a square in the middle the same as he has. Let me just make this a little bit bigger for us. I just want to make sure it's right in there dead center. Okay. I think that'll do it. So we're a little bit off. I'm going to come to the right here and I'm going to hit my cuts and layers. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to change this layer to a red layer, my line. And I'm just going to change this because I don't want to cut right through it. So I'll just change it to 80, similar to himself. 20 and 20. I've got air on. I'm good. I click OK. One important note which he makes, if you come down here to the right under your laser window, you'll see that it uses absolute coordinates now. And let's see if it cuts where it's supposed to cut. Okay, we'll send the job. And let's run the job. Just going to click back on camera control, see if we can actually see it happen.
Okay. So what I found was when I burned the inside of the circle, it was almost bang on, but it's like a slight hair to the left of where it should have been, at least from my eye. So I went here into light burn and underneath your camera control, you'll see width, height, X shift and Y shift. And I believe these are adjustments or finite adjustments, I guess, to the uh, orientation or to the positioning of the, the laser. I added a 0.5 X shift because I wanted to move it over to the left. And we're gonna check to see if that's how this stuff works. I updated the overlay. So I clicked that. And as you can see, I removed the MDF. I'm gonna put the MDF back in. And this time I'm gonna put a square around the larger part of the target and see if it's bang on this time. So I've just placed the MDF back into the bolt. I'm gonna click update overlay so that I can see what's in there. There it is. And this time I'm gonna zoom in. We're gonna use, sorry. We're gonna use that same target, but this time I'm gonna put a square in the larger circle here on screen. Let me grab my square, I'm gonna press shift, and I am going to attempt to get a square inside this circle proper. Okay, I'm gonna click my selection tool. I'm gonna to see if I can get this. Okay, that looks good. I like that. Yep, so I can see it's just on the edges and these are just touching. So I'm gonna highlight that. I've made my X shift a 0.5 shift or adjustment. My file's good. I'm gonna to go to my cuts and layers. I am gonna make that a red and I'm gonna leave my power settings at 80 millimeters per second and 20% power. I'm good, I'm highlighted. It's right in the middle. I'm on absolute coordinates where I should be. I believe we're in good shape. Let's take two on this and see what happens. We'll send her to the bolt. Okay, let's burn it. I'll just put you back here on the camera to see if it shows you what happens. Yeah, that's much better. Just that tiny little adjustment. So now we know what those controls are in the camera control window and what that does relative to the alignment of the camera and your laser head. Wow. Well, I have to be honest. I made a lot of mistakes putting this together and trying to get through this process. It's not that it's super complicated. It's just there's a lot of steps involved. I hope I've captured it uh, in a manner that will help you folks out if you're brand new and you just got the bolt. Hopefully, I'll catch everything on this video. On the next video, I'm actually going to use the camera to try to do an engrave on a very odd shaped object or material. And we'll see how tight those tolerances are and if I've got any adjustments to make in that camera control window. But at least we have an understanding of what that does relative to the, the laser head, how to calibrate it on a Mac, and I will leave some links to both of these videos on Thunder uh, Laser USA's knowledge base. I'll put those links in the description of the video. Thanks so much for hanging around. I know it might be a long video. I'm gonna tidy up and I'm gonna head inside. I hope you have a great week. Good luck in all your different laser projects this week. And if you are just hooking up the camera, best of luck with it. And let me know if you ran into any other troubles or if this video was at all helpful for you, especially if you're a Macintosh user. Please be kind to each other. And I'll see you again right here. I'm Gord Potter, and you've been watching LaserNug. Cheers.